Comedy is a fashionable business. Many people try and succeed in comedy, but only a select few triumph. But just how do people get their break in comedy, and what do they get up to when they're there? Well, I got in what was quite a noise. I went to University of Cambridge, and then I was in the footlights, and so I went on from there. And then I, well, so I did reviews, student reviews. Then I, and then I got, I directed one in Edinburgh, and I was given a job as a radio producer. And I, then I was a radio producer for three years. And then a friend of mine was doing a thing called Not That I Could Use. I was asked if I wanted to be in that, because I've been in a lot of reviews and things. So, um, and it all just sort of followed on from there. I started on the street. I first started um, trying to do stand-up comedy about 1985, and I played to the London clubs like jongleurs and that. But then I uh, gave up on that because I <laughs> got uh, heckled too much. So then I sent sketches off to a weekending on Radio 4, which was a satire show, which finished recently after. 18, 20 years, and nearly as many laughs. Heckling is always a problem, but how do comedians come back from a really good heckle? If it's just a decent personal comment, I can say, you're really not the least bit funny, I hate you, something along those lines. That's sort of what we... And if the crowd don't go with you when you put them down, you know, well, they keep going. You're not funny, you're not. You're crap, you're whatever. See you all. Just so you can hear it, nobody else can. They start tagging your lines, or saying you're not funny. You're not. You're not funny at all. Tagging your lines. Tagging your lines is uh, doing the gag just before you do. But only you can hear it. Many comedians are inspired by the works of their peers from within the industry. I always greatly admired John Cleese because he went from being a sketch writer, like myself, to writing fantastic um, uh, sitcom Forty Towers all the Monty Python stuff, writing the Monty Python films, then going on and writing A Fish Called Wanda, and I just think that his whole span of his career has been uh, excellent all the way along the line, so I've always admired him. I always love Morgan Wise, and I love, I love people like Frankie Howard. I worked with Frankie Howard a lot when I was in radio, yeah. So I always loved that, yeah. I always loved all that old comedy, rather than brand new, spanking new comedy. I didn't have much time. I used to love. When we left, when we were at school, we were sort of Monty Python people, you know, Monty Python babies. It really struck, it was fantastic. And now I don't have so much affection for that. My, my favourite two, I suppose, would be Eddie Izzard and Lee Evans. Oh, I like Eddie Izzard. Uh, both of whom I think are geniuses. Uh, on the special front, it'd be Les Bub, who you probably don't know from Adam. Um, he's an English mind, but he's really good. He's not like Marcel Marceau stuff, he's just really funny. Um, and an old guy called George Carl, who's, I think, lost it now, he's a bit senile, but he was funny. Comedians have different styles, but where do they get the basis for their material? Well, it's uh, uh, society, I suppose. You look out at the world around you, and uh, you base it on that. They, somebody cleverer than me once said that satire is a distorting mirror uh, wherein we see ourselves more clearly. Um, and uh, I think, you know, Whichever government we have and whatever the fashions are, there's always going to be something to laugh at, whether it's uh, uh, Mrs. Thatcher or uh, cabinet ministers uh, getting caught on Clapham Common. It's, uh, there's, always, there's always something out there for us. And happily at the moment, we live in a time when the president of America is a philanderer and the president of Russia is a drunk. So it's a great time to be a comedy writer. <laughs> I have a big barrel. And I go in there and I just see whether I can just scrape the bottom of that barrel or not. <laughs> some I make up, some, you know, old gags, whatever fits really. I won't pinch somebody else's material. You know, the old ones that don't really have any copyright. Yeah, if, there's, if, it, if I hear a joke and it's nobody's, then I'll put it into the set. As with everybody, comedians have pet hates, but what are they? What I don't like, I, don't, I can't stand people who do their act or tell jokes. So, 
Um, there's nothing worse than being stuck in the back of a taxi with various famous comedians, because all they do is they sit and look at you as if you're some sort of audience. And you, after a while, you begin to say, and how are you? Mm. Yeah, there's one. Um, yeah, uh, what's his name? Vic Reeves. Vic Reeves, Bob Bob's nicer than Vic. I've been uh, uh, pissed off by various comedians who've uh, behaved badly. I don't mind naming Chris, um, what's his name, the guy from Red Dwarf, Chris Barry, who uh, uh, behaved quite appallingly once at a radio recording when he was the star of our show we were doing and at lunchtime said he wasn't doing the show and I had to spend the whole afternoon massaging his ego so that he would go and turn up for these poor people who were coming to be in the audience. So uh, I, uh, I never work, I'll never work with him again, but uh, I don't suppose he cares. Every comedian has moments of when they're hilarious, but what about the times when they're just not funny? Um, quite often, have I got news for you, Angus might be teeing up um, a joke that uh, you're quite proud of, and he'll do the setup to it, and then Paul might on Sunday go, is that a wig you're wearing, Angus? And you think, oh no, the moment's gone. And uh, he'll read the uh, line, the setup line again, and Paul Mullen goes, there's an echo in here, I'm sure he just said that. And then you go, right, well, then this joke is never going to happen now because it's, uh, it's been ruined. And he might sort of splutter out the punchline, but the moment's gone and uh, you just sort of don't laugh. That was very funny, yes. Mel got very cross about that sketch because he'd all dressed up as the clown and he was thinking, then. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't really get a laugh from it at all. There's been times where we thought things are funny and audiences just haven't bought the concept at all. But you never really know. We always say, let mistress audience decide. <laughs> but he's wandering around just as a bleeding clown. But clowns just aren't funny. It's the old thing. We've now had an insight into the comedian's world. We know what they love and hate. But remember, it's still up to you whether or not they're funny.